thank you all for joining us this evening and enlightening this evening with your presence and for uniting with Icy Wind. Tonight's event is also in support of children who are suffering from cancer. And it's sponsored by the International Society of Children with Cancer. 2020 is an exceptional year for women for five reasons. This is an election year. And what better way to voice your concerns as well as your support than for voting? As of today, incredibly capable women are held back in political arenas, but they resist, persist, and need our support. Unofficially on the ballot, women's reproductive rights are listed this year. 2020 is also commemorating the 100th year anniversary of women's right to vote in the United States. This year is also the year of the census. International Women's Day is globally celebrated each year on March 8 and is the focal point in the movement for women's rights. Designating this day as International Women's Day began in 1909 in New York, and the United Nations officially recognized it in 1975. Based on the impressive efforts of women and girls in recent years for equality and fairness, the theme of the 2020 IWD is Each for Equality, and all for equity. This year's International Women's Day is especially significant because it also commemorates the centennial anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment for women's right to vote. We are the Iranian circle of an international organization called WIN which stands for Women's Intercultural Network. We are a nonprofit, non-political, and 100% volunteer-based organization working to bring awareness to our Iranian-American community about women's issues such as equal pay for equal work, domestic violence, sexual harassment, homelessness, and so on. Our goal is to form a more unified community of Iranian-American women and men who can have a collective voice of their own. Treating everyone exactly the same is actually not fair. What equal treatment does do is erase our differences and pro promote privilege. So in this particular case, if you're actually talking about treating everyone equally, you're actually raising the fact that there are privileges for some people. So in this sense, equality is giving everyone what they need to be successful. Equality is treating everyone the same way. So equality aims to promote fairness, but it can only work if everyone starts from the same place and need the same and needs the same help. So basically, the idea of fairness, even though it's the idea that is very difficult to measure, is the idea that is, is much more fluid, but without considering the conditions under which people are treated, treated equally, it, it actually really does not reach the equality that we are talking about. But it's also not just for women, it's, it, it's, it's something that basically is much more, as, as the team of the conference, the, the, this event is actually discussing it, is actually for everyone. So equity considers the condition of everyone having fair share of you know, access to resources and so on and so forth. They actually talked about, even when they were trying to empower women, they were talking of women as chief mom. And uh, so, and they, in that sense, there was this idea that even as they were talking about, they said, you know, our hunting past, these are men saying, our hunt, hunting past has made us become more tougher and become more risk takers. So these traits have become part of the story that have become actually internalized and highlighting the difference in that sense. So in, 
interestingly, they actually argue that, first of all, this, this is story itself is a myth. Anthropologists have discussed cultural origin stories that become extremely power, powerful, become difficult to unravel, and they can persist despite contradictory evidences. So what is in, in, in the way we are dealing with these stories is to actually unpack both what is in the language and what is that we have come to consider as part of the culture, that we have cultured this way. And in that sense, if it's cultured, then we have to think about shifting cultures and constantly changing those, instead of allowing for legitimizing ideologies, because this is not simply culture. This is a status quo that, uh, that, some, that there are uh, ways that people actually want to hold on to, some people who have power want to hold on to. So for instance, um, one of these researches shows that for, in, in 1968, a cigarette company, company in the United States decides to target women to bring them to consume tobacco. And what do they say? The ad says, you are come a long way, baby. Interestingly, even women themselves say, Women cannot become a president. America, the U.S. is not ready for it yet. I mean, we, we actually make claims ourselves, perpetuating the same story, making women to sit in the background because we think women are not ready. Instead of using the word mother as a noun, we should use the word mothering as an act, as a verb. And in that sense, say mothering is a particular kind of act that men can also take and do. So Andrew Dossett comes and takes this and, and celebrates it, but then shows that even in Canada, it was very interesting. When men sit, were sitting home and when mer men taking care of their children, they said they were feeling guilty because they were not providing for the family. Women, on the other hand, when they were going to work, they were saying they felt guilty because they were not being the real mother. So she's talking about how these cultural ways of, again, thinking who should be the mother, who should actually take care of. If a father does something, take care of the children, it becomes hero for us. Is a mother, God forbid, takes one second of her work and not take care of the kill, children becomes not a good mother. To think about constant call for interplay between gender equality and gender differences, and focus on how context, space, time, and even embodying a particular form of being in the world matters in how equality and difference can interact. So instead of letting go of differences, how we can actually appreciate and uh, appreciate and actually embrace those differences and make those differences become the condition of making the world a better world. When violence erupts, we constantly talk about who goes to war, who gets killed, how then the buildings are erected, and so on and so forth. And we rarely remember how the ordinary life gets sustained. Who actually sustains the, the ordinary life? And again, this is essentializing the role of women, which has to be taken apart, but is the significant, the same significant that those hunter-gatherer stories have been told. The role of women who are in, in many ways the, the very basic, the essence of sustaining individuals, children, communities, their men, and so on and so forth, gets reduced to this idea. Equality in many situations is very important including, for instance, Iran, where people are still fighting over equal rights of many, many things. So it's very important. But when it comes particularly to the different conditions we are living with, we have to see how war, immigration, violence, domestic violence, and all these different forces are actually creating conditions where, in fact, equality in the law does not suffice, disrupting what is in the language that reinforces gender inequality? What is in the culture and the stories we tell as, as scholars? We tell stories that are very dangerous in many ways, in many situations. So how we become actually very much aware of those stories and catch ourselves when we perpetuate them in our, our everyday life. I want to really again celebrate the life of those women who actually in the everyday practices, 
in the midst of all those, those situations where life becomes impossible, render the sustaining, uh, sustaining of life possible for themselves and for others. And for that, happy Women's Day. Art takes us everywhere. Let us support these artists and encourage their art. I would like you to know that 100% of the um, proceeds tonight will go directly to the artists. Women experience protest, sometimes violent dissent, from others in their environment who wish to control how and with whom they act. Tonight's pieces illustrate this conflict in their depictions of how women negotiate power in their relationships, not only with their partners, but also their employers, extended families, and parents. I come to Los Angeles for love. I leave my Brazilian motherland with a man who tells me he always knew he'd marry a Japanese woman. Is that what I am? I had no idea. Brasileira primero. Brazilian first. I immigrated for love. And I almost died for it. But Japan makes me realize how Brazilian I am, and Brazil makes me realize how Japanese I am. In my head, I'm inseparably both racially non-binary, but when I walk through the world, people expect me to choose. The American looks at me as if I'm a spy. What kind of accent is that? Sorry, thought you were American. I am American. Brazil is in America too. South America. I refuse to die in a foreign country. But when you're mixed blood like me, it's hard to say what's native or foreign anymore. The thing is not to die alone. We can't let Elena cross over alone. I have to go to Los Angeles and stand up for her. Today we have a lot to celebrate. Not just as a commemoration of the International Women's Day, but also for the fifth year anniversary of Icy Wind. The great Nelson Mandela once said, there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the one in which it treats and empowers its children. We believe that the children are our future. We would like to invite Ms. Addison Santos to the stage, please. Oh, would I still be wondering If I could go back and change the past be a little more in 2020, we will be focusing on broadening our reach and providing educational programs via media. We all would like to urge you all to do your part to ensure that the future for girls is bright, equal, safe, and rewarding. We encourage you to donate online by visiting our website, icwin.org, or stop by the membership table and donate today and give the opportunity of a lifetime to young women to become a delegate at the UN. Stay involved, please. Become a member today. That's how you can start getting involved. Share your ideas and volunteer. As they say, it takes a village and long dedicated hours to put a program like this together. Stay involved, and what better way than to volunteer? Donate, register to vote, and please complete the census. We also would like to acknowledge and thank our co-sponsors today. Your participation is, of course, priceless and very much appreciated. <laughs>